and welcome back to Culinary Alchemy. I'm your alchemist, Cassie H. And today, because tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day, we're doing shepherd's pie! Oh my gosh! Now, for those of you who don't know, shepherd's pie actually does not have a crust whatsoever. The top is mashed potatoes. It's not the same thing. It gets kind of crispy, but it's, it's awesome. It's really good. So, shepherd's pie, traditionally an Irish dish. Traditionally, they would actually use lamb because they had lambs laying around. Go figure. Uh, today I'm using beef because it's less expensive than lamb, but it's slightly more expensive than pork, and I felt like splurging. So yeah! Alright, so we're also making Brussels sprouts, just roasted really nice, and we're also doing roasted root vegetables. So we're making a whole meal out of this. So for the entirety of your dinner experience today, for the asparagus, or I'm sorry, the uh, Brussels sprouts, it's just Brussels sprouts, and oil. I'm using the coconut avocado blend again. You could use olive or butter. Up to you. Um, this onion actually needs to go over here. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, for the roasted root vegetables, I have some leftover butternut squash that I needed for a recipe the other day. And I had all this leftover, like a cup and a half-ish. So we're going to cook that with some sweet potatoes. I'll just roast it in the oven all day. It'll be great. Uh, you need for the shepherd's pie itself, you need potatoes for the top that will be mashed. Um, we got onion, just about a pound and a half of ground beef. We're using Kerrygold butter. I'm letting you see the label because this is the only Irish butter I have available. Now if you have different Irish butter, use that. I like Kerrygold. It tastes good. Also make sure you buy unsalted butter. This lowers your sodium content. It is important. You also need a little bit of flour. I've got a bag here that are mixed peas and carrots, frozen. Um, you could do any sort of vegetables you want, but peas and carrots are kind of traditional. Also, you will need a bottle of beer. Traditionally, you would do Guinness. You could also do chicken stock or beef broth or something like that. This is a brand of hard cider that is gluten-free, um, just because I like the taste of it. And also, it's beer that I can drink. So, I'm thinking that's everything, so let's get started! Movie magic! I peeled the potatoes! Because you guys don't want to watch me peel potatoes, unless you actually want to. That'd be weird. Um, so, I've got a pot here of water that's finally coming to boil. It is lovely. If you've got water it's not boiling, throw some salt in it. Teach that who's boss. Um, so we're going to cube these potatoes so we can make mashed potatoes. So just take your potatoes, cut them in half. Now sometimes they've got these little air pockets inside. Just kind of cut around that if you can. Or when you chop your potato, just take those pieces out and you'll be fine. Unless it's growing like black stuff, then, or green stuff, you can still just eat it, it's fine. It just doesn't look very pretty. Wait as I cut it in half again lengthwise, and then cut it into strips like french fries, and then just dice them. Take it, place in readily boiling water. If it splashes you back, that's okay. Build something. Courage or pain tolerance. That's what it's called, pain tolerance. I was thinking resistance. That's not the right word. That air bubble doesn't go very far, so I'm not super worried about it. It's not going to alter the flavor at all. Like I said, if it was sprout and stuff, then I'd be worried about it, but it's basically potato colored, so. No biggie. And right now your chunks don't have to be super uniform, since we are going to mash these potatoes. Um, if you were just going to boil the potatoes, then yeah, you'd want them to be, you know, uniform and take more than a few seconds per potato. but. Good if you really wanted to, just put like put your potatoes on a slotted spoon and lower them down. That would probably be a bit safer. It's also the you know wimp's way out. So after you put all your your potatoes in the water, just let it come back to a boil and just like monitor it for about 15-20 minutes until all the potatoes are nice and soft. And you're gonna strain it so you can make mashed potatoes. 
Now to another dish, I already peeled these sweet potatoes and we're going to chop these up, pretty similar to how those were, but slightly more uniform, and then toss them in with our butternut squash, maybe cut up some of the bigger pieces, and then I'm going to roast those for like an hour until they're awesome. Sweet potatoes are extremely fibrous, so it helps me to do them by quarter, roughly. Now if you have a mandolin, that would be super helpful. And if you don't, just be very careful, use a sharp knife, and don't chop off your fingers. Hospital visits are not very fun. Those just go in our big bowl here. It's gonna be a whole lot of orange and that's okay. So I got all my root vegetables chopped up. They're in this wonderful metal bowl. So I'm going to drizzle on some of my oil. And like I said before, you could use olive oil, you could use straight coconut oil if it's liquidous enough. Um, just get enough there. And I'm going to use my hand and toss it off. Just try and get everything covered, even if it's just a little bit. What we're going to do with these in the oven is we're going to uh, roast them. So you want to put them kind of close to the top rack of your, your, um, your oven. You want them close to the heating element. And that way they can get nice and cooked. Because a lot of these, they take about an hour to cook. But start checking at about half an hour, just in case, depending on your, your oven and how good it is. Spread it out here. Now both butternut squash and um, sweet potatoes are pretty uh, sweet. So this will actually, like for me, if I eat something sweet with my dinner and it's not necessarily dessert, it cuts down the, the feel like I need some ice cream after this or you know something like that. Some people disagree with me, but I like having just like a sweet vegetable or fruit or something with my food. That way, you don't have to have dessert. So I just did salt, we'll grind some pepper. Pepper and oily hand, not super fun, but it's okay. So I'm going to put this in my oven at 375, and I'm gonna start checking it in about 45 minutes, make sure everything is kind of fork tender. So I'm just double checking my potatoes here. I'm pulling them up on my, my uh, spatula, sticking them with a fork, goes through really easy. So these potatoes are done. Ouch. So I'm going to drain these off into a colander that I handily placed in my sink. Let those go for a sec. So your potatoes are pretty close to being done now at this point. Uh, we've already got our uh, vegetables in the oven. So I'm going to cut up an onion. You guys don't want to see me cry. And then we'll get started on the next phase. Ah, I cut onions and didn't cry. Holy crap. So I've got another pot. Go figure. Um, I've got it heating up right now. So I'm going to put about that much butter in it. <laughs> I think it's about two tablespoons, it's probably a bit more. Uh, the nice thing about uh, doing shepherd's pie like this is depending on the size of your dish, you can kind of modify the amount of stuff you put in. Um, it's a really, I've always found it's a free flowing dish. As long as you've got enough mashed potatoes to cover the top of whatever you're using, you could use a pie pan. Today, I am using this souffle dish. Nice and deep, it can fit. It's about three and a half inches deep. A bit of onion skin there now. Um, and it, it cooks really nicely, so I like using this for shepherd's pie. Some butter, almost melted all the way. It smells fantastic. I wish there was smell-o-vision so you guys could smell it. Melt all the way. That's pretty close. All right, so 
Take your onion, put this in first. Why you ask? Because onion takes an ungodly amount of time to become translucent. So we're gonna cook this onion about three minutes and then we're going to put the rest of these vegetables in and let it cook the rest of the way until everything is soft and fantastic. And somewhere around there we're gonna put beef in. Probably we're gonna put beef in next, now I think on it. But we're gonna give these about three minutes first. I put a little bit of salt in here, and now I'm just kind of trying to break up these onion chunks so they cook a bit faster. Look at how beautiful they are, so buttery. Um, instead of butter, you could just as easily put, again, that olive oil in here or something. I just like using butter, and I bought this Kerrygold butter just to use in this, because it's Irish butter. I'm also going to use it to make mashed potatoes, because Irish butter. Shoot, use whatever. I've never used coconut oil in mashed potatoes, but I've heard it's pretty good. Check my time. I've still got like a minute and a half. I think with the amount of beef I have, I'm actually going to just go ahead and put it in a bit early. So I've let these cook for about two minutes. The rest of this here. Grab my ground beef. Like I said, this is about a pound and a half of beautiful beef. Now you could use beef, you could use lamb, you could use pork. You could mix the three together. I've done that. It is one of the best things I've ever eaten at that point. Now you're going to cook this until it starts turning a bit visibly brown and then put in the rest of the uh, frozen vegetables, which are pretty close to being thawed by now, which is good. That means they'll cook that much faster. As you can see now, our beef is at least turning brown. There's a few chunks of solid pink left. And the onions are kind of translucent, but not quite, and that's good. If you want everything to cook and kind of come together done around the same time, you want to put them all in stages. So we've got the rest of our vegetables. We're just going to pour these in here and cook until the beef is brown and everything else is soft and awesome. Now it's going to take an extra minute because these were still a bit cold, right? So the temperature of all this awesome is going to go down. So give it some time to get back up. It'll be okay, I promise. Just stir it all up. Looks much happier now. Happy, happy, happy. Everything is pretty well cooked. You can see it looks awesome. So, I have here some flour. This is coconut flour, so it's stupidly dense. Um, you could use rice flour, you could use wheat flour, you could use whatever you want, as long as it's a flour of some kind. Starchy stuff. Now what I'm not going to do is pour this all down in one go. That would be a silly thing to do indeed. So I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit on, and then I'm going to stir this in. Now what we're doing here, instead of making a roux, we're just making this a bit thicker with the juices that are already in it. Now this is a dish you do not drain unless you buy really fatty meat, which would be okay, honestly. Make it more flavorful. So we've already stirred that batch in, so I'm going to stir a bit more. And basically we're going to stir this until I decide it's okay. So it's going to look thick and there's not going to be any just kind of layabout juice in the pan. You might turn down the heat just a bit. All stirred up. Just about. I can still see as I'm stirring there's a bit of uh, liquid still in the bottom of the pan. Last of the flour. Ow. It's 
don't touch your pan, folks. It's going to be hot. Alrighty. I'm gonna let this cook for like a minute. Tops. And then we're going to add our pièce de résistance, our bottle of beer. I hope I pronounced that right. Alright, it's been a mid my time. It's been a few seconds for you guys. So we're going to take our lovely, lovely beer and pour it in. This is really good with Guinness if you like Guinness. Plus it's like super traditional. But, hey. So you're going to let this cook for a bit. Let the worst of the alcohol cook off. Not necessarily cook off, but steam off. Um, and uh, let it thicken a bit. Now flour is really going to help with that. And then once it thickens up some, we're going to put it in our dish and then we'll make our mashed potatoes. And we'll be home free pretty quickly. It shouldn't take very long. Just keep stirring it. Keep an eye on it. You could leave it alone for maybe a minute. You know, if you have to go like take care of the kids or something. But don't leave it for more than a minute or not even two. I wouldn't do that. Just baby it. It is worth it. So the worst of the liquid's cooked off. It's a bit thicker now. Not much thicker, but that's okay because it will thicken as it cools, which means after it's done cooking. So I use this prep bowl as a spoon rest. I brought over my dish. That way I can just pick this up and pour it in. Look at that beautiful thing. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Now, because everything's already cooked, you could just go to town with a spoon. And honestly, I wouldn't blame you because it's really, really good. But why do that when you could put mashed potatoes on top and then go to town after it gets crispy? Which is what we're going to do. So we can let that sit on the counter for a bit. Get the worst of that steam out of there. Whilst we get ready to make mashed potatoes. Don't mind me. I'm horsing around. So... Got these potatoes, and I actually had to microwave them because they, I should have done this while they were still hot. So kind of mash them up a bit. You'd think I would have a potato masher, but I swear it's like one of the very few kitchen items I do not own. I'm going to have to buy one, the amount of mashed potatoes I make on this show. Or just in general life. Oh no, my mashed potatoes. I drop it. Now I know what you all are thinking. You're thinking, Cassie, you just had ground beef in that bowl. Now you're putting potatoes in there? Well, that may be true, but I also have a sink and dish soap, which I used. So I cleaned it before I put starch in there. I promise. Wouldn't lie to you guys, and I wouldn't endanger anybody's health like that. And once again, that's a cross-contamination thing. If you've got raw meat on something, you wash it off before anything else touches it. Unless they're going in the same pot, same time. And even then it's iffy. Alright, this is pseudo mashed. So we are going to take some of Le Boutier. That's unsafe, don't do that. <laughs> we are going to make some mashed potatoes. I might put a tiny bit of milk in here, but you want them to be really thick. So the butter's fine. Milk, maybe a splash. Tops. Oh, and salt and pepper. You want that. Low sodium is one thing. Good tasting. Yeah, you want salt and pepper.
Once you got your mashed potatoes done, these are a bit chunky, and that's okay because my arm is tired. I'm going to be completely upfront and honest with you guys. <laughs> I put a bit of salt and pepper in here too. So, we're going to take potatoes and kind of just dollop it on. Now if you have a piping bag or a gallon size zip top bag, that would work for this too. I did not have a gallon size one. So I'm going to just spoon it on. Now you would pipe this on because uh, like at a restaurant or something, you want it to look fancy schmancy. So you'd want just that that uh, that look, like with the lines and all that in it. That, you know, it's it's gorgeous, honestly. But for me, I am okay with the hum homespun, spooned-on look. It looks kind of like biscuit dough, honestly. It'll absorb that liquid most of the time, not always. And since it's really chunky, it ought to absorb the extra liquid. We've got a little bit of extra potatoes, but I think that'll be enough. So I'm going to take a spoon of these potatoes. So I'm going to put these in that same oven with the, uh, the potatoes. I've put the potatoes on the bottom rack. There's, what, 16 minutes left. So once the vegetables come out, this will stay in for about a total of 20 minutes until the top is nice and brown, a little bit crispy. Oh, it's hot. So for the Brussels sprouts, thought I forgot, didn't ya? I did not. So we got these Brussels sprouts and I put them in this nice little colander, partially so you guys can see them. And also partially so that I can just rinse them off real quick, which I'm going to do. I'm going to use cold water. This water is not terribly cold yet. Just rinse them off just real quick. There we go. All right, so we're gonna take these Brussels sprouts. You see some of them still have their, their uh, roots that they have uh, attached them to the branch on them. So we'll just cut them off nice and quick. All right, now to cook Brussels sprouts properly, you take your paring knife, okay? And you're going to make just a, a cross or an X on the bottom. So you're gonna just cut it and only go Part way. You're not going to go all the way through. This is going to let your cooking fat of choice, be it butter or oil or whatever, get into the center of the Brussels sprout. And when they're done, they'll curl out and look all funky. Scare your friends. Brussels sprouts. I like these a lot, actually. I like to cook them in bacon fat, honestly. That's one of my favorite things. Um, but they're also really good just with butter and salt and pepper. I don't think you really need a recipe for them. But they exist and they're good too. So like I said, we scored all of these just up, down, side to side so we can get the butter inside when it cooks. So those are just there right now, chilling out. I've got my pan just heating up. And yes, it's the same pan I cooked the shepherd's pie in. No, you cannot judge me. <laughs> so I've got some more butter. It's about that much butter. I need to stop shaking my knife around. Once this butter melts, we're going to have ourselves a party. Butter melted. Go figure. So you take your Brussels sprouts and you drop them in there. Now they're a bit wet, so they're probably still gonna snap at you. Be prepared for it. It hurts a bit, but it's okay. That's what lids are for. I'm gonna have the lid to this somewhere. Now these, they they're like. I'm not cooked, I'm not cooked, I'm not cooked, and then all of a sudden they'll cook. So, 
be ready for that. I have a, a, a dish here that's baking grade glass. It looks mysterious, like something you would serve a pie in. It's just ready there, that way when they get cooked and they're done, I can just transfer them real quick like. In the meantime, give these some time to cook, put a bit of salt on them, pepper. They're popping. So your Brussels sprouts are done when you can stab them with a fork and it comes through nice and easy. Now I put a little bit of garlic in here and some salt and pepper and I've just let them go. And it looks, they look good actually. They might look a bit over caramelized to the uneducated uh, or those who don't cook Brussels sprouts terribly often. But I assure you, these are well cooked Brussels sprouts. There's a little bit of, of burned garlic in there. That's okay. That happens when you put garlic in there. Don't they look awesome? And I, I am pretty dang sure they taste awesome too. And what I've done here is these are the, the roasted uh, root vegetables. I've just put them in another serving dish and I've covered them with foil. Uh, just to, to let them rest and wait until the uh, shepherd's pie is done. But I'm pretty sure it's done now, so let me grab some hot pad holders and show you. Try not to spill this delicious gravy. Woo! So like I said, the potatoes don't always soak it all up. You can see where the potatoes, they're just really dark colored. That's because they've absorbed as much of that gravy as possible and they just couldn't take any more. So one way you can fix that is adding more flour to your vegetables before you put in the beer or using less beer, maybe half a bottle, depending on how much you're making. Cooking is always a learning experience and it's always different, that's okay. I'm okay with super soft, super, super squishy shepherd's pie because that means more gravy for me and I'm all about that gravy. So, looks wonderful. Let me take this off so you guys can see everything in its completion. I'm not gonna serve any of it yet because we've got a bit before everybody comes over. So, thank you guys for watching this week with our shepherd's pie roasted brussels sprouts and roasted root vegetables one sleeve down might as well take the other one down too um i had said before earlier or i forgot to say earlier annotations for allergens will be over here as well as anything i might have done wrong i can fix over here like what i said about the uh, the flower <laughs> shepherd's pie so give our video a like subscribe up top give us comments below tell me what you think of the show what you think we should do next and uh, we'll see you next week bye